it was one of those things that's like recommended to you on the side where it's like, you know, if I were a smart Marine, I would, uh, I'd have an AK or something in my, uh, in my vehicle just in case, you know, somebody accidentally gets killed, you know, I wouldn't get in trouble for it because, oh, well, it's obviously an insurgent. He has a weapon. So you're in the clear because you killed an insurgent. Uh, when we arrived there, um, they gave us quite a few AKs and they said, keep them in case something happens. And Who's that was bag? about it. It just, it just went from chain of command down to us. And it actually was pretty much everybody on the base. When mistakes were made, we carried drop weapons. These weapons right here were taken from the Iraqi police uh, back during our first deployment. And this is just an example that we would take their weapons and carry them around with us in case we did mess up and shot the wrong person. I've heard numerous circumstances of, uh, of civilians getting killed and then um, you know, soldiers and Marines subsequently uh, placing weapons on their bodies or placing wire on them. We would photograph all the, all the people we killed, and in the photographs there would be the, the object, either the shovel or the AK-47, and uh, that was proof enough to protect the individual soldiers from uh, getting tried for any, any sort of crimes. We hear of very few of the prosecutions that actually occur in Iraq and Afghanistan. But of those that have made the newspapers, I can think of three off the top of my head, which uh, involved a uh, dropped weapon. Uh, so yes, it does happen, and it happens more frequently than we would like to believe, and certainly more frequently than we know. You got a crew of three guys that use the same truck every single day. You know, you throw an AK-47 that you confiscated a house in your truck, and you don't turn it in. You just keep it on that truck. That the AK-47 is always there. It's not something that you have to be reminded of. It's just always in the truck. So if it happens, it's like, well, like, oh yeah, we got that AK-47. It goes down through the ranks. That stuff spreads real quick, and there was definitely no discouragement from doing it. So, you know, it got done. I carried drop weapons. I'm sorry? I carried drop weapons myself, so. Where would you carry them? In our truck. I was actually in a, in a seven ton truck, so there was plenty of space there. And uh, we had so much gear and stuff crammed in there already. You know, it's not hard to stick it in there. How serious of an offense is it? I, I assume that it's essentially a criminal cover up. Premeditated murder is a possible charge. Obstruction of justice is another. Conspiracy, if there's more than one individual. Conspiracy to murder, conspiracy to obstruct justice. If you lie to the NCIS or whoever the investigator is, Army CID, then you have a false official statement as well. So there's a cascade effect from the single uh, act of dropping that weapon. It almost made sense, like it was common sense, like you have to carry a drop weapon unless you want to go to prison for killing an Iraqi. You know, it's not that we wanted to go out there and kill a bunch of innocent Iraqis, but because of the nature of what was going on, it was almost guaranteed that it was going to happen, you know, so like it was a natural step to hear drop weapons and all that, like it made sense. You take a commander, he's in charge of all these young men, and it's his responsibility to get them home safe, you know. What's going to look worse on him? Losing a soldier and having to go tell his mother that he just died? Or having some Iraqi that you can just throw in a dumpster or throw over a wall or hide under some brush or throw in a drop weapon on and say he was an enemy combat and let's move, move out? I absolutely heard superior officers and higher ranking officials talking about this stuff, you know. I'm not talking about, like, sergeant, you know, so-and-so, or, you know, lieutenant so-and-so. I'm talking, like, majors and, 
you know, you got a lieutenant colonel talking to, you know, the sergeant major of the battalion, and it's like they're talking about this stuff openly. You're like, yeah, it's against the rules, but you got to cover your ass somehow. Individuals uh, don't want to have to deal with a wrongful death, don't want to have to deal with a murder. I mean, if the troops go out and kill somebody and CID has to be brought in and suddenly you're being investigated for your performance in training your troops and then in reporting or not reporting what you knew or should have known, then this presents serious problems for the commander. And commanders may, some weaker commanders may be willing to even encourage this. The whole point of the drop weapons is you don't tell anyone because the second that word is even mentioned you're gonna get burned you're gonna get fried for it you know and that's well known but it's also encouraged that you do carry them just in case it's just one of those ugly little things that they like to keep on the down low you know isn't it something that they should be speaking out actively against? I think there's no question that seniors in the chain of command, they know about drop weapons. They know that it goes on. Uh, when you're talking about platoon commanders and company commanders who are closest to the actual troops, of course they know about it in detail. As you go up the chain of command all the way to a four-star general, I have no doubt that the most senior officers in Iraq and Afghanistan, all the way up to General Petraeus, are aware of it. But what are they to do? You're, as long as you put high power weapons in the hands of 18 and 19 year olds, bad stuff's going to happen once in a while. And the best we can do is aggressively prosecute those cases that we become aware of. Everything we did there, and when we were there, it didn't seem wrong. Everything was right because people that we charged with, people that we trust, and people that we have to take care of us, they tell us it's fine because they give us the rules of engagement and they do it and we just unfortunately we're young and our brains are innocent and they control it and when you tell a 19 20 year old kid that just you know sees his friends get killed and things blow up all the time he don't care if you tell him this he'll do it when you know something is wrong but you feel like you have to do it if you want to survive and you want to go home to your family um, it's almost like you're being put in a place where you have no choice except to be dishonest. And uh, I think that's a difficult burden to place on people. I don't think it should be placed on people. I don't think that's right. The American public just doesn't know what's going on, and the American public doesn't care. Unless they've got a son, brother, husband, wife, sister over there, they just don't care. It doesn't touch them. And, and that's not necessarily their fault. I think it's, it's our leadership's fault. I am certain that uh, drop weapons are still getting used today. Um, things are still going on the way they were then. It's still getting used. I guarantee it. <laughs>